r slash ask reddit. Armored the look 4495 says. What's the local urban legend or ghost story unique to your town? 44,035 says. I grew up in Ohio, and in the next county over, there used to be a home for children with the spectacular name of Gore Orphanage. If you're ever on the Ohio Turnpike west of Cleveland, you'll see the sign for Gore Orphanage Road. Supposedly in the 19th or early 20th century, the orphanage caught fire one night. People rushed to get out, but many of the children who attempted to jump out of windows were trapped by the bars on the windows that had been installed for safety. It was tragic and deadly, with children's screams carrying through the night, while people tried to battle the blaze. Their spirits continue to rest uneasy, however. If you go to the site where the orphanage once stood, which is located in a rural, isolated area near Lake Erie, you can often hear the cries and moans of the children, still sounding after all these years. This typically happens at night. Generations of Northern Ohio high school kids have driven out there, typically to scare the crap out of their girlfriends or just to smoke weed. The story is untrue, of course. The Gore family did run an orphanage for several years, but after a while, donations from local churches weren't enough to keep the home open, and eventually they moved away, and the large home sat empty. No fire, no death, no haunting at all. It's mainly the high school kids who kept the story alive, because it sure sounds cool. Afsim to Old Forthus says. Their family name was Gore and they didn't think maybe they shouldn't name the orphanage after themselves. Imagine losing your parents and someone says well, off to the Gore place ya go. Spooky. Ibala Kitten says. Gore Orphanage Gore Orphanage. Clever Wall says. Local park is called Fanny on the Hill, not officially. The pub was named the same, but it is closed now, not named that at the time, obviously. Back when Dick Turpin was robbing carriages up Shooter's Hill, he was in a relationship with Fanny, who worked at the pub, possibly a prostitute. Travelers would stop at the pub on their journey and she would use a mirror to signal to him if they had things worth stealing. When Dick was caught and hanged, she went to the park behind the pub and hung herself from the biggest tree at the top of the hill. Her ghost still scares people today. Now this is a story I was told as a kid. I googled it as an adult and found nothing. So I posted in the local Facebook group. Several other people were told that same story. So why isn't it on the internet? Pork underscore chap says. Ghost hooker hired a PR firm to scrub the internet of her story and clear her name. Kraus might says. The giant wild dog. I grew up in a small regional Australian town surrounded by bush, and there was always a story that there was a huge wild dog, or sometimes a pack of them, that would stalk people who walked up bush tracks. The accounts vary, sometimes it was the size of a Great Dane, other times the size of a horse, or even a car, if people were being extra. Never saw it myself, but I remember going up into the bush with my cousins as a kid trying to spot it. Robo409 says. Considering there are spiders in Australia large enough to make sounds when they walk, this story doesn't sound too far-fetched. Comfortable Deer9186 says. Ogapogo, like Nessie but Canadian. Newsalum777 says. Okay, I'm from Colombia, and in the small city I live in there is this urban legend called Los Nias Dulce or the Candy Slash Sweet Kids. The legend says that there was an orphanage in a mountain many many years ago that burned down. And all the kids died there. If you go at midnight in your car to that mountain with flour and candy, and you spread flour in the hood of your car, then put the candy in the hood as well, get into the car and lock all the doors, you first will hear children lullabies and you will feel as if someone is on top of the hood of your car. When all that passes, if you get out, you can see the imprint of hands and feet children's size in the flower and some of the candy missing. Thea Cough Story says. Okay, but which cracked out sugar addict was high enough to discover the combinations of actions that would trigger this particular haunting in the first place? Newsalum 777 says. 
That is a good question. Badadis1 says. I live in Silicon Valley, which used to be all farmland. There's a, or used to be, a Toys R Us toy store on land, where a farmer died violently, and that store had a well-known poltergeist issue. It was a pretty famous feature of the store. Sporkyside says. It's now the Sunny Vale Rii. Creative underscore a cover says. Grew up in a small rural village and there was a story that dated from around the 16 or 1700s called the Witch of Winterslow. The legend goes that farmers hunting animals like hares or foxes would find that as their dogs were about to make a kill, a large white hare would suddenly appear out of nowhere and lead the dogs astray, with neither the hunting dogs, their prey nor the white hare ever being seen again. This happened so many times that the village began to run out of hunting dogs and the local village hooker suspected that witchcraft was at play, so he fashioned a custom made bullet forged out of a silver coin and joined a hunt, and when the white hare appeared, he shot it. The white hare was hit by the silver bullet, but was not killed outright, instead. Being mortally injured, and jumping into a thicket, and disappearing before the hunting party could catch up to it. When the hunting party returned to back to the village, they found it in a state of drama, because a local lady called Lydia Shears had been found shot in her cottage, and was bleeding out badly. The woman died as a barber surgeon attempted to extract the bullet from her, but as he did, it turned out to not only be the exact same bullet that the vicar had shot the magic hair with, but the lady had been shot in the exact same part of her body as the hair. After that day, there were no more appearances of the white hair, so people supposed that Lady Lydia was in fact the witch of Winterslow, and that the white hair had been one of her. Creative underscore a cover says. There was a lot of evidence of witchcraft and superstition in that area, for example, in a number of the ancient sheds and stables on the farm I grew up in you could find witches marks carved into odd places, which are special symbols designed to ward off evil, as well as ghost stories. An example of a local ghost story would be the one about the white horseman. Sometimes in the dead of night as the winter solstice approached, it was reported that you could see a warrior on horseback dashing through the hills at night. These hills were in a zigzag and like pattern and the horseman horse would gallop and leap over the hill so fast and gracefully it was almost as if its feet weren't making contact at all with the ground. Most people only saw the horseman and were never able to keep up with the warrior before he disappeared, but over time some people managed to follow him and they r slash ask reddit where is minx says how do you feel about celebrating your birthday a day early is it generally considered acceptable or a bit unusual rossicheek69 says good job alerting the police about your plans they have to arrest someone for pulling the tag off their mattress first and then they are on their way to you where is minx says I'm planning a week long trip to Seattle, and will be returning to work the day after I get back, which happens to be my birthday. Would it be alright to celebrate my birthday a day early? I'm not sure why I'm seeking validation from strangers. But just feel unusual celebrating it a day early. Thessalus Addict says. It's my birthday, my rules. Howard2112 says. As with all holidays you can celebrate it when it's most convenient. You telling me you all didn't have birthday parties as a kid on the weekend that didn't fall in your actual birthday? Just finna 4 now says. Not a big deal. CG2L says. Nah mate. You only have one day, that is your day, and it's illegal to celebrate it any other day. Quintoff says. I don't even celebrate it. My birthday make me sad. Gloomy Resolve 8630 says. You can celebrate it whenever you want. Lemon Jello says. Eventually it just get to when things are convenient at least that's how I feel. Things can get so hectic during the week I'd rather just do it on a weekend when I have time to enjoy it. Third Backensless says. It doesn't really matter. 
Schwarzes underscore, Locke says. People born on leap day can celebrate their birthdays a day before or after. No big deal. Goldblum's Power Book says. I usually celebrate my birthday on the nearest convenient weekend. When you're an adult, you can throw yourself a party whenever you want. Nervous underscore magazine underscore 200 says. I say celebrate it whenever you want. I often celebrate on the nearest weekend, if my birthday is on like a Tuesday or something. Pee Wee Max says. If something that trivial stresses you, you need to get over yourself. Jamus Games 6969 says. It's considered bad luck to wish someone happy birthday ahead of time in Germany. It's just some weird superstition, but do whatever suits your lifestyle. Eileen Madboard says. Yalo, get in as many day celebrations as possible. Patifulud3412 says. That's not really. JT26CLL says. Why celebrate at all? Not like you, me or anyone really done a favor by coming to this world haha. I find it pathetic honestly. Leftist right he says. The only real issue might be legal age issues. Lotto, ALC, smokes, 6, seniors discounts, etc. More underscore beer says. I've had over 20,000 birthdays, but it might be a bit premature to celebrate waking up tomorrow. Ken's Duingo says. Thanks to those damn liberals, anything guess these days. Shakes forward sky. Basic Fisher says. Early birthday celebration? It's like pre-gaming for the party of the year. Totally acceptable, and it's twice the fun. Danavel says. I don't like it, but I've had to accept it, because of my husband's job. Spoonman007 says. My family has very different schedules, so we do birthdays and holidays, when it's convenient for everyone. Luckily everyone is chill about it. Upstairs underscore cost underscore 3975 says. You trying to fit into your favorite zodiac sign or something? Conch Octopus says. I can't recall the last time I actually celebrated on my birthday. It's either been a bit early, a bit late, and once, really late. Al Raling Wolf says. Not allowed. The underscore Elon underscore MRS underscore coffee says. Instead of celebrating my 30th birthday, I celebrated my last day being in my 20s. Ariguhai says. I had to a lot growing up as it's on a major family holiday, and it was either that, or the whole thing revolves around me. Pipithas in head says. It's fine. 12112 says. I always celebrate my birthday when it's convenient for the people around me that matter. A few days early or a few days late. Makes zero difference to me, as long as I can see them under the context that we are together cause it's my birthday. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.